short video I'm going to show you how I stitch together several aerial shots taken with the DJI Phantom 3 drone to create a panorama using Lightroom and Photoshop. So first of all we've got to we have to select the files which were taken from the same position as the drone hovered and these have to be checked very carefully to make sure that the drone doesn't move laterally during that phase and the drone just has to swivel on its axis taking pictures. So I've identified here that these files 314 through to 310 are the ones that are capable of being stitched together. Now these look a bit dark but they are raw. So the first thing I do is I hit, I hit in Lightroom Control M which will create a panorama preview now I've ticked off auto select the projection so it will pick from one of these three uh, projection uh, perspectives there but I'm not clicking the auto crop button because I don't want to, I don't want to chop in any further than I need to because I'm going to use the blank space which I'll show you later so we're creating the panorama preview and that's it now I'm just going to check this quickly using the magnifying glass to make sure that I can, I've got what on the frame what I want Okay, I'll now go proceed to merge this properly. Now I'm pressing merge and up here I've got the created panorama bar lit up in progress. Okay. We've now created uh, we've now created the panorama that we need. And here it is. Double click on that. And what we've got is quite a dark file. It's actually loading the preview now view now. Because this uh, screen's a 5K screen, this, this does take quite a long time. However, we're not going to work this in Lightroom immediately. I'm going to move this file across into Light, into Photoshop to work to do the next stage. So, edit in Photoshop. Open it up. Reading the camera raw format. I'm always working in RAW for this. Okay, here we've got the file, the combined panorama. This is multiple layers. So the first thing I do in Photoshop is to reduce this down into a single layer by flattening the image. And now what we've got is an image that's, that has perspectives which aren't quite right because they've been taken from different angles. So I'm going to straighten all these horizontals and verticals up. And I do this by going into the filter, adaptive wide angle angle sub program. Okay, we'll scale it down. So to get the full, I want to get into the frame the full picture. And I'm going to draw on the verticals. I'm going to overdraw the verticals using the shift key and the crosshair as such. What the picture will do, it will start to adjust itself to match the verticals that are present in the picture. And for some on that, I might need to magnify this just to get the verticals precise, like that. Drain pipes on lamp posts are the best. You have to be careful when you're identifying the verticals because sometimes you want to identify a vertical from a lamp post and you'll find out the lamp post actually being knocked over is off vertical which then skews the whole picture which makes it interesting. And we're best to get the, we're best to try and pick the verticals from the very edges of the picture in order to get all of the picture just incorrectly. I think that should do it. So I'll scale it back. Let's see what we've got. Press the command zero button there. There we go. So that's the picture. 
Now I'm satisfied that I've got the, uh, the verticals correct and then move on to the next stage. So that wide angle has now been applied to the uh, to the combined pictures. I'll now once again reduce that down to a single layer. This saves memory. And I'll crop it in. I want to get a village more or less in the middle of the more or less in the middle of the picture. So that's about as far as I want to go but on the right hand side now. This area here is not really of a lot of interest, so I'll move that across. But again, try to keep this key uh, or, load, or landing jetty into um, the centre of the picture. I'm using uh, the third grid markers because there's this rule of thirds that I try to work by, which allows the, the interest to be captured, the, the visual interest to be captured within the one third markers. And that's working quite well for me because I've got that roughly the same distance as that. So I've got that in the centre of the two thirds. So that works, but that works for me. This is all subjective. So now press uh, carriage return or hard return and what I've got is a picture with some areas missing. Now what I do to fill those areas is to get the lasso and draw around the areas that I want to fill which is that. Now that, if I then press the delete key it moves into content aware fill. This is very clever. This is only available in Photoshop. But we do a content to air fill. And using various algorithms, it will work out what's best to put into that, into that zone. And then do it for the bottom two C zones. And I've got a full picture frame. I think what I'm going to do is crop it again. too much of the detail. Watching the third markers, that works okay. Okay, so we've got a combination of pictures there, which gives us a lot of detail. Back into Photoshop, and into the next filter, which is the Camera Raw filter. Camera Raw filter allows us to manipulate all the data that's in there, all the colors, all the, uh, all the light and the darks. And we've got a very, highly detailed large file that we can now work on and because these are captured in RAW I've got a lot of latitude in the ability to handle the, um, the light the light and dark in this exposure so I'm going to press the auto one which is a good starting point but it's usually all over the top and it is a bit OTT here so the exposure is too bright here so I'll just wind that back a little bit I'm going to darken the highlights of the skies and lighten the shadows. And we've got some, uh, as you can see, we've got the verticals working quite well here. We've got the whole of the village in the frame. Increase the clarity to give it a bit more punch and the vibrance. That's working okay for me. Now for the next stage I'm going to move this crop back into Lightroom because some of the controls in, in Lightroom are a little bit easier than they are in Photoshop so I'll commit those changes. That's the change there. Next step is just simply to quit Photoshop. It will then offer me the opportunity to save this file which I'll save. And it goes back to the original file and there we are with the, with the new changed file. So now into develop mode and all I need to do is to make light adjustments, very small adjustments to, to this picture, just to get, get effectively get it like I want to. Now these roofs in these roofs would benefit from a bit of reworking. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pick up the uh, saturation adjustment here. I'm going to go onto the red of that roof and just wind up the red up there. And you can see that the file's moving far too much. I'll move it back down again. There we are. That's okay for me, that red there. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, deepen the sky to add a bit of dramatic, dramatic impact to it. I'm going to use this, uh, this little tool here, which is the uh, graduated filter. I'll wind the exposure back on that a little bit. So we're darkening the, the top and increase the clarity of that. As such, to get that. And the next thing is, 
using this uh, brush here, the, 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 kind of, the kind of magic brush, the adjustment brush, you can, uh, I'm going to add clarity and definition to the sea. So what I'm actually doing is I'm painting that sea. And then having painted that sea, I'm going to increase the clarity. So I'll increase the highlights, make those bright and make the shadows darker. Now it's quite dramatic. I think I'll just increase the exposure slightly on that. The green colour. I'll close that mask. And that file is more or less okay for me. So now I will simply export that file. Which will preset. That's it. Well, right, that file. That's a file I've just made from five or six other raw photos shot by DJ Iphantom 3. Well, that's going to be 